What's going on, everybody? It's Justin and Patrick of the band Process of Fusion, and you are listening to the Band vs. Artist podcast. And we are here with Manifest, who is a pretty big deal in the Christian rock rap sphere of music. Eight studio albums, a book called Fighter, and what we're most interested in is the Smart Music Business series. So, uh, Manifest, what's going on, man? Just chilling, man. Just finished hanging out with my wife, watching a really funny movie, and uh, just getting ready for uh, actually a webinar tomorrow um, to train some students on how to make some money with music. Well, good. That's that's pretty important. So I want to get into that at some point. But um, yeah. So you you started this smart music business series. I know you were on a record label. Now you're independent. Um, why did you go back that route of an indie artist? Well, a lot has changed in 15 years. Um, I released my first uh, independent album in 2001. That was an EP. And, you know, we didn't have social media and all the things that are available to artists today. And really, the only way to really get out there was to sign with a label um, Mm -hmm. and to, uh, you know, get on radio or get on tours. You didn't have you know, YouTube and all these awesome platforms that we have today to kind of build your own audience yourself and let alone, you know, rock stars, pop stars, but these YouTube stars and just online phenomenons, even Instagram, you know, stars. Um, And so it's just a different world. And, you know, I've built a fan base and that's kind of what I teach is that if you have a fan base, just like that whole thousand fans thing, then to have a great income and have a, a great career and make a lot of money doing what you love, you don't need a label. It is, um, it can be part of the journey. It can be part of your business model, but it's, and they're great. They can be great. But, um, you know, for me, I would sign again. It would just have to be a major deal. Um, right. like a worldwide global, um, you know, thing. And they'd have to have a check with a lot of zeros behind it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, after hustling, you know, for as long as you have and, and doing what you're doing, if if you're gonna go in, you you gotta go all in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So, what would you say are some of the misconceptions about being an indie artist? Um, that's a good question, man. Thanks. Um, I I think that, you know, it depends who who you're talking about, you know. But I guess the most common one would be is it's a lot of work. Um, it's a job, it's a career, it's like, it's not, you know, but this is the same thing. Like, it's not that much different from the label. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of, a lot of artists think that, you know, when you sign at the label, they're going to do all the work for you. And it's like running a record label, you know, that's really what it is. You are the, essentially starting a record label. You are the marketing, you are the press, you are the video director, you are the social media content person. And um, I think, I guess this is would help artists the, the most, is I think they don't plan enough mm-hmm. and they rush things out. And I've been uh, known to do this before. And um, they turn off the marketing and they, they think people are tired of hearing their message because they've been, you know, promoting it so long. But I always say to artists is that... Um, you're going to get more tired of your marketing message about your album more than your fans are. Your fans want to hear, they just want to hear it. Maybe not the exact same thing. Like don't, don't say buy my CD, buy my CD, buy my CD, you know, share your story, share the creative process. And so I think the misconception with, you know, being indie is, you know, the amount of work and planning and just the fact yeah. that you are that label now, and don't be ashamed of it. Just put your hat on, get down, build your team, have fun, and uh, you know, don't like just enjoy it, man, and why, and just like love it. Like I look at someone like Jack White um, from White Stripes, you know, just yeah. doing what he loves, does the vinyl thing, and just being creative with it. Like you know, you really do have all that creative control stuff, and you can do whatever you want when you want. And this is the other thing I'll just say. Sorry, I, see, I told you I'd start going off. Um, <laughs> it's all good, man. Is they don't know all the income streams that are available. Um, it'll blow your mind. Like, holy crap. Like, when I 
finally went indie, and then all of a sudden I realized there's they, they were taking money from my pocket here, 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 and I was they weren't even reporting some of the other stuff, and I just I just don't have the I'm getting my records back eventually anyway, but there's I could I could t- totally send a lawyer and do a little nice audit and probably put some money back in my pocket, but I just I just don't even have the hmm. time or stress for that. Did Did you feel at any point that like you were bound, like, I mean, you were able to come back out and become independent, but I know for a lot of artists, they feel like they can't break, not that they can't, you know, legally break those contracts, but they're, they feel so bound by their label. Like, do you, do you feel that it was not necessarily easy, but at least simple enough for you to kind of like segue into becoming an independent artist again? Or do you feel like they were trying to keep you, I mean, obviously they want to make money, so they want to keep you on their label, but like, was it, easy to go back out on your own well yeah i had a really good lawyer and to be honest i just feel like god really protected me and artists listen up on this because there's at one point where i would have signed anything i I, I really would have just signed anything and um if you read my book fighter i share a story how this meeting with the record label just fell to crap because I brought a whole bunch of hip hop guys into a into a record meeting that really should not have been there. So <laughs> never bring your friends into a business meeting. Um and so anyways that whole thing fell apart and I would have been offered a full deal. But long story short, I ended up signing something that was very different than your traditional deal where the label owns the masters and owns a piece of your publishing. Um they just did a licensing deal with me. And so I owned my publishing, and they only licensed the albums for a certain amount of years, and then I got my albums back. Okay. Plus, plus they didn't have rights for Canada. I was able to keep Canada because we get grant money here, and I have to be able to control them. Right. But then the next deal I did, I only worked with them in the USA. And so this is another misconception about indie artists. Is they don't realize that, like, why the heck are you signing with this independent label, okay, it's a record deal, that's a record deal, it could be an indie label, why do they want worldwide rights? Why do they need Germany if they don't have feet on the ground in Germany? Why do they need the UK? Why do they need Japan if they don't have a proper plan to promote you? They're just gouging the artist. And so by this time, I was very ready to go indie. I knew exactly what to do because I was I, I, was, I was a little different than a lot of artists because I, I just... I had to survive, man, and so I just had to yeah. figure out how to eat and how to put money on the table. I just, I just didn't want to fail, you know. And so I learned all the social media stuff, and I, I just, I, I don't know. I'd rather probably have just been in the studio and different things. And hmm. to be honest, you're, you're sacrificing one thing for another, but you know, I learned it, and it helped me. And you know, I'm one of the ones that still survived and have a, have still have a really great career, and so I'm very thankful. That's that's awesome, man. And obviously, um, going out on your own, you you build up this knowledge and this this sort of database of of information. Uh, what made you start Smart Music Business, and you know what was the whole drive behind that, and what's the response been like? Well. I, I just want to help people, you know, and it started out with my book fighter and just wanting to inspire people and conquer fear and different things that I struggled with. And I just always wanted to help people. And then I found myself whenever I'm at festivals or in the green room, hanging out with other artists or having conversations about stuff and I'm asking them about certain things and they're asking me about stuff. And I'm just, and I, and I'm like, what, you don't know about that. What, you don't know about that. And, <laughs> I felt myself just kept on wanting to kind of pour into artists and help them. And and uh, that's kind of where smart music business kind of like birthed because I had made so many stupid decisions. Like, you know, I could have negotiated one point on a contract that they would have totally agreed to, but just because I didn't know probably cost me, you know, over a hundred thousand dollars, you know? And so I like to call it smart music business because I just made some decisions, some dumb decisions and trying to help, now other artists not make those same decisions, you know. Um, I know what it's like to be frustrated and not know what to do next and just waiting for that phone to ring or someone to just show any 
bit of interest in you at all. And it's just like you're just kind of grabbing at straws. And I remember when I had someone start to coach me. I had a coach before I had a manager. Yeah. And, man, did he kick my butt and just really show me the ropes and get get my business hat on. And so that's kind of what I do now through Smart Music Business. It's actually called fan base university and that's kind of the coaching thing and i just i love it man i get on the phone with my students in vermont coach them challenge them and just uh i i enjoy it. you know my first thing is my art my music is my, my priority but now that's kind of now what i'm doing helping helping other artists with different videos and trainings and courses and all that stuff no, that's awesome man i know i've i've watched a ton of these videos too Especially a a, cool, cu- a couple of months ago, because like I said in the in the intro, we're we're in a band, we're we're like a a rap rock sort of progressive type band. Um, okay, so, sick. And the fu- a funny story is ten years ago or so when we were forming, uh, Patrick and I we uh, we used to mess around and and cover your song Impossible in my parents' basement. Nice. So. Nice. Yeah, so we used to we used to mess with that, and I just sort of I do the rap vocals in the band, and I used to play the drums. So that was really what? my first. That was really my first experience, like starting to to like rap and try to do vocals was was messing around with Impossible. So it's pretty cool right. that we've come full circle to talk to you on the phone. <laughs> yeah, good. that's awesome, man. Good for you guys, dude. So you guys are still doing music now, then. Yep, yep. Yep. We we have uh, awesome. we have the same disease as all the other artists that don't know that don't know when to give up an, an addiction of music. So we just keep going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I tell artists, you know, we could be doing anything else, you know, that could make a lot of money. But I wasn't in this for the money. I was in this for the heart, and just want to make a difference out there in people's lives. And you know, just the fact that I'm able to make a living at it too is just a bonus you know yeah yeah and that's i think that's almost what every artist is is trying to do well i know you got you got some people who just want the fame but i mean us us nice guys <laughs> are just trying to have some <laughs> just trying to have some fun if we can make a couple bucks on the way too hey awesome but um yeah, absolutely what's uh what would you say is like the top uh, question or or like problem brought up to you by some of these students or even by some of the people you've encountered? You know, sometimes I think I go into the advanced stuff a little too much, but I think the more common is, you know, how to get started. Mm-hmm. You know, like just where do I get started? And I feel like people want to record songs, they want to get out there, and they just don't even know where to get started, whether they start with like a cover or whatnot. And, and I always say like, you know, if you want to get into the music business as an artist or whatnot, it all starts with the songs and having, you know, sure, you could start with covers, but eventually you got to have your own material. you got to have your own songs and recording those and just, you know, touring, playing shows and just get in the game. Start, surround yourself, you know, other people. And, you know, I just think a lot of artists just don't believe that they could do it, you know. And I, and I can relate because... I remember even after getting signed and, and whatnot, like I thought things were going to blow up overnight and they didn't. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until I actually had success in Japan and I, and you know, we toured there where I actually felt like I had made it. And that was just so different for every single artist to, to, to experience such a personal thing, like success or whatnot in this. And so I just always like to say, you know, enjoy the journey and just, start like you know you are an artist just by writing by getting up there and whatnot it doesn't necessarily have to be full time or whatever but like you know um just start writing songs start performing them it doesn't have to be perfect you know just get started that's um i don't know if that answers i don't know what your audience is i could probably say something different no, depending that's... on what your audience is but no, I think that was a that was a great answer. I think a lot of young artists, people just starting out, they they don't feel like what they're writing is good enough, or like they feel like maybe something that they're writing has been done before, and I think that's a that's a huge challenge that feels insurmountable sometimes when you want to feel like you're expressing who you are as an artist, but you, I mean, you want people to care, 
And I think sometimes we, we think that everything we have to write has to be our magnum opus. And that's like our biggest crutch. It's like, well, not everything you write has to be the best song you're ever going to write. Sometimes what you write is just going to be, you know, just a basic expression of what you're feeling now or, you know, what you're going through at that point. Yeah, absolutely, man. Just put it out there. Fail as fast as you can. Get it up, you know, there. Let the fans hear it and, you know, pivot, change. You know, like I've made a lot of songs and it's taken me a while to figure out, you know, what my fan base wants and what works for me and what doesn't. And, you know, spend a lot of money in the wrong places, and a lot of stupid mistakes. But I, I, you know, I don't let it hold me back and try not to think about it, you know, really try not to. Yeah. And and you mentioned that you you sort of you got started around fifteen or so years ago, so here's a hypothetical: if if today was just like fifteen years ago, you know what would how much different would the struggle uh, for the indie artist be? What what sorts of things would you have to do to stand out uh, without, I guess, say social media or even having something like YouTube? Well. You know, you said it earlier, you guys covered it. You know, that song, Impossible, has been huge for me. And, you know, a good song will change your life. A great song will change the world. And that song, Impossible, is kind of one of those songs for me that kind of changed the world, my world, a lot of other people's worlds. Mm -hmm. And it only takes one hit song. And so I would go back and I would get like really invest myself into songwriting more um, production. I wish I kind of would have learned more and just not been afraid to collab with other artists and be more open. And I felt like I kind of was maybe secluded myself and um, didn't, you know, put myself out there as much. Like I'm very comfortable walking into a studio and writing with a bunch of people now and whatnot. But previously, I think I hid to myself and I wouldn't have done that so much. And I would have probably focused on like really like commercial songs, whether those are heavy metal songs or radio songs or whatever. But I would probably just really focus on making just really great songs because you don't have to necessarily slog it out on the road. And I think I slogged it out on the road when I didn't have to. I could have done it a little smarter. Mm -hmm. And so if I was to start over, that's probably, you know, one of the things I really would have changed and, and obviously leveraged, you know, online. Um, and, and maybe I would have picked up a guitar and covered some songs so people would find those covers, but then they'd also find my originals. Yeah. Um, but then I'd probably, probably then I'd stop doing covers right away once I had the, uh, once I had the fan base, because I think, you know, there's a ceiling with covers and, you can get a stigma a little bit. I think Walk Off the Earth has done a good job of, you know, having their own brand as well, but they still do the cover thing. So there's just so there's just there's so many ways, right? Like there's just so many ways. Like some people look up to me and they they take my advice or whatnot, but like, you know, and it, it, the, you just take all the different pieces and you apply it and make your own. Like there's just like dude, like there's just so many different artists that are finding success in just different ways, and it's just by just getting started, right? So. Now here's a word from our sponsors. And we'd like to give a special shout out to our sponsor of the Bandverse Artist Podcast, Computer Sam. If you have problems with your tablet, your phone, your computer, or pretty much anything electrical, Computer Sam's got your back. So check out computersam.nyc for more reasonably priced service for your electronics. Are you working on any other ventures? Are you part of anything else that's like non-music related or just other sort of things that are that are coming or in the works? I'm going to work on another book eventually, and mm -hmm. I definitely am into other you know business things that I, I don't make you know public or anything like that. But I'm always you know I'm an entrepreneur at heart and uh, love just creating and doing stuff. Um, but music is definitely my my main focus, and then. Uh, Helping, uh, helping other artists and stuff. Oh, well, I'm glad. I'm glad you said the word entrepreneur because that's sort of the things that like we like to talk about here. And I know one of the questions we ask sometimes is, "What are some jobs that you had other than musician?" I know you had a, a from reading your book, you had a very serious job, 
but uh, what are what are some jobs that that you've done prior to music that people would be like, wow, and now you do music like sort of that yeah. sort of deal. Well, I didn't even know, and it's funny. I just kind of thought about this the other day, hanging out with my wife. Is that I really had the entrepreneur thing in me since a kid. You know, I shoveled driveways. You know, we sold crackers and lemonade. You know, we had the lemonade stand. You know, uh, I was a janitor um, at one point uh, for this college. You know, I uh, delivered newspapers, uh, and I never worked at a retail thing, though. You know, I never worked at like a McDonald's or anything like that. I went from straight from like janitor, newspaper deliverer to like high paid network engineer. Um, so, and then to to a musician. So it's, it was quite the uh, quite the switch up, you know. Any regrets ever at any point? Unfortunately, yeah. You know, yeah. I, I, there's definitely some some regrets. You know, that I, I really try not to focus on those. Mm-hmm. I really do. You know, I think I quit my job a little too early. I think I wish I invested the money a little bit more and uh, knew. But again, I didn't. I didn't know. You know, and just yeah. um, just made some decisions and wish I had taken advice sometimes from people that were offering it and uh, slowed the frick down, you know, and that's why I say to some of you artists, like, slow the frick down. Like, it's not like, it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be, and you're not going to lose the deal overnight. Just like, just think about it, sleep on it, don't worry about it. There's, mm-hmm. there's no pressure, you know. Yes, work hard, but like, man, sometimes they just jump at any freaking opportunity and, uh, you know, make, they make decisions a little too, too, uh, hasty. And uh, I wish I had a heated some advice for sure, but you know what? There's so much mercy and grace as well too, and that's where you just you you can't dwell on that crap. But like, man, don't make the same mistake twice. And so I'm I'm learning. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. And most importantly, let's talk about your music. You have uh, a new record on the way, Ashes. Um, can you tell us a bit about it? Um, and you know the direction of, of the sound, when it's coming out, all the, all the good stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Someone, like, circulated that rumor about the name. Um, it's uh, it's not uh, official yet. It's actually going to be called something different. I'm not yeah. uh, announcing yet, but it's definitely going to be a rock record um, teamed up with my, some of my good friends, Adam, Seth, and Joe. It's just, it's just a freaking monster, man. It's <laughs> like... No plan B impossible. Just like rock, um, with some big hooks and just dark pop rock. Like I'm just yeah, I'm really excited about this. It's totally me. I'm not doing hip hop stuff anymore. It just doesn't work. Sure, I'll be rhyming a little bit, <laughs> but uh just really think I'm kinda like everyone loved my album The Chase and has wanted something like that similar. So I'm just calling this like the Chase Part Two. So um Really excited to, to, to get this music out there, man. I'm in the studio again next month. So it's not going to come out until next year, though. So that's, again, I'm slowing down and I'm putting the pieces in place. You know, we're not rushing mm-hmm. it out this time. And it's so easy to want to do that. But it's just like, no, like I want to make sure this thing gets the right momentum, the right marketing, and, and do it right. So mm-hmm. but, uh, I appreciate what you guys are doing, man. Yeah, no, and I appreciate you uh, sharing your story with us and, and, and doing this. And I would also say, so can we exclusively say that Ashes, this is not happening. It's not called Ashes. So whoever started no, this not. rumor is completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are we the, are we the first people to, to report on this? <laughs> I don't know where I heard that somewhere else. Um Cool, cool. It's a cool title, though. <laughs> they trying to say I, 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 I burned everything to the ground, and I'm like the phoenix coming out from the ashes. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I even read it. It said ashes that it's going to be just a predominantly rock record, and blah blah blah. And I was like, oh, okay. And I was like, I didn't really hear him say anything about that, but I'll, I, I'll throw it in yeah. there and see what he says. <laughs> That's right. All right, That's so right. so you all heard it here first that Manifest's new album is not called Ashes. Whoever started the rumor, cut it out. He's slowing it down, <laughs> and it'll be out when it's out. <laughs> yeah, man. That's so right. any, anything else to add? Anything you want to leave our listeners with? 
uh, in the world of Manifest? Man, no, I just keep creating music and uh, keep putting just good good vibes out there and share your heart. Don't be scared to write about stuff. You need more artists, man. We always need more artists. And uh, if they want it, if they want some more help or coaching from me, they can go to smartmusicbusiness.com or manifest.com to, to listen to my stuff. But anyways, man, I'm gonna bounce. You guys are freaking awesome, and uh, <laughs> let me know uh, if I can uh, help. Where are you guys out of New York, right? We're in New yeah. York, Staten Island, New York, home of the Wu Tang. <laughs> awesome, awesome, man. Love it, love it. All right, thanks, well, thanks dude, a lot, man. Thanks, thanks for, for taking up, the time. Man. Let me know. Let me know when it goes live, and I'll uh, I'll send it out to some of my uh, audience. Sure thing, man. Thanks. All right, all right, guys. Wish you all, all right, the best. Man. All right, bye. Cheers. Bye. Stay tuned after the break. The Banverse Artist Podcast is brought to you by the Kings of a and website, a place where musicians and artists alike can go to find out the tastemakers of the industry. Learn something new at Kings of a and All right, so that was our interview and conversation with Manifest. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool to get some uh, insider information regarding what it takes to be an indie artist, some of the misconceptions of being an indie artist. I think it was it kind of really put things in perspective for us also being independent artists. We are independent artists, but the biggest difference is he's a he's a successful right, independent a, artist. That so, is a big difference. So we have things to learn. Right, but being that his job other than music, what he does other than music is helping artists awesome. you know, reach their potential. I mean, I think he oh, well, gave us some good advice too. Yeah, you know, and I, 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 like I mentioned during the during the discussion like at least at least for me pers- personally as you know someone who writes a lot of music like sometimes I get hung up on not wanting to not necessarily show the band when I'm writing but like I, I sometimes I write something and I'm like this isn't good enough you know where I might think that but other people who might be listening might not think that you know and there's probably more content not that you should put out content for the sake of putting out content but there's probably more potential content that we don't, you know, write and record and play just be, just for the sake of it, you know, being insecure about it. Well, even look at it this way. Some some of the songs that we've written over the years, we don't even really like them anymore. <laughs> that's true. But yeah. people, there are some people who love them and they're like, that's my favorite song. And we're like, really? We hate that we're like, song. how come you don't, you guys don't play that song yeah. anymore? Like, we, we hate that song. But, there, you know, he, he brought up a good point that it's just... What what, it, what exactly do they say? A, a good song will change your life, but a great song will change the world. Yeah. Something like that. Yep. So I, I feel like for just some people, you you have a great song. And if, and if your song, it might not change your life or it may not seem significant in, in your realm of, of what you can do. But for someone else, that might be the song that... You know that gets them up in the morning, yeah. or you know inspires them to do music. So I think it's really cool, and I, I think another good thing that Manifest kept pushing was to not be afraid to fail and make sure you make those mistakes. Because I guess in basically in terms of if you're not making mistakes, then maybe you're not trying hard enough. You know, maybe you're not pushing hard enough. Um, to have a success because you're not trying anything that's going out of the box a bit. So all around and and what was cool about Manifest, he kept it he kept it short and sweet. This was a impactful 25 minute <laughs> conversation. It was, yeah. It was. And we can ask we'll ask him afterwards. So maybe we'll look out for this answer tweeted on Twitter, but you know the world wants to know what was the funny movie that you were watching. Manifest. <laughs> You could tell us later. It's okay. We'll, we'll put it in the annotation somewhere. Right, exactly. But uh, for us, as an indie band, we uh, we finally played our first two shows in like a year. Yeah, that was uh, that was that was probably a bit of fun. W- one was fun and very good. The other one, mm, yeah, not so much. Could take it or leave it. Can't win them all. Yeah, but it happens. And you know, we made a little bit of money, so we can throw that towards studio time and. Um, you know this record that we've been telling you about for like the last five or six months. It's, you know, it's still there. It's it's coming uh, maybe in another five Eventually. or six months. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see. But um, yeah. I mean, that's it. That's what, it. What about you, Patrick? 
Uh, let's see. I mean, the shows were good, other than the second one. First one was great, the second one was fun to play, still, but not our best set, admittedly. Um, as far as what Manifest said, I think it's, you know, pretty inspirational for our band, and hopefully for other artists, too, because it's tough, you know, it's, it's tough to f commit to, I mean, if playing music is your dream, it's tough to commit to it, because you know how overwhelming and how daunting it can be to think, well, how am I going to do this on my own? I know record labels are the, the devil, so to speak, are evil. Uh-oh, watch out. Yeah, I know. And want to control all the money and control what you write, so it's, you know, you don't want to give in to a record label, but at the same time, you know, like, a, like he said, it's, it's a lot more work than a lot of people anticipate, because you are all of the, you know, professionals that come with a record label. You are the publicist, you are the uh, social media person, you are everything, you know? So it's daunting, but it's, I mean, seeing the success that he's achieved, it's definitely... It makes it worth it in yeah, the end. Yeah, it makes it worth sure. it. For so. sure. And you get to keep your rights on your music, you, you get to keep all your stuff, your hard-earned stuff. Yeah. You're not make, it's not like, uh, I guess when you're on a label, it's like you're working uh, for a corporation. Right. Or you're working for a job. You know, you're, you're not the owner of your job, you're working for an mm -hmm. owner. You're putting, you know, you're putting food on your table, but you're... You're building a, a mansion for him. Right. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so if you're interested, YouTube Smart Music Business, and you'll see Manifest Face pop up and tons of videos to help you uh, learn lots of things. And you could subscribe. He even sends some nice inspirational and pointers uh, through email if you subscribe to that. You can check him out on manifest.net. Uh, stay tuned for his album that's not called Ashes. <laughs> Um, yeah. Shame on whoever started that rumor. Don't fall for it. And uh, shout out to Dylan who did not make this episode. No, very um, sad. Yeah, we're you know it's okay. He he's done a couple episodes without Patrick. Well, the last one was without Patrick, so we're we're just trading, trading off. Trading off, yeah. But yeah, we trade co. So uh, hopefully uh, our next guest, you'll have the full uh, POF effect again. But uh, yeah, so this is Justin and. Patrick, and we are in the band process of fusion. And thank you for listening to the Band vs. Artist podcast. Shout out to Manifest for being the man, and we will talk to you all later. Peace. See ya. <laughs> <laughs>